Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Glory to God. We read it? <laughs> Y'all in Luke chapter 10? I'm going to bring it in now. I want to stay in the street. Mm. Yeah. You ever got up under a downpour? Have you? You know how when you're in the shower and that water just running on you? That's where God wants us. He wants us under the word. It's just coming, falling down on you. And it's just filling you up to your cup. Overflow. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 10. God, I don't want to stop that one. Luke chapter 10. And verse 38. Now it came to pass. As they went, they entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Re underline that. Received him into her house. Underline that. And she had a sister called Mary. Not the Mary, not the mother of Jesus, but the Mary that, 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 that wiped his feet with her hair. Mm -hmm. Had a sister called Mary, which sat at his feet and heard his word. Mm -hmm. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do I not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered her and said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. Yes. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Mm -hmm. I want to go to, I want to, go to Psalm. The 16th division of the 16th Psalm. And the 11th verse. Psalm 16, verse 11. Are you there? Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. And at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. God, as I get ready to break the bread of life, send forth the anointing. Makes preaching and teaching easy this morning. God, I ask you now, God, to give us priestly ears, circumcise our hearts, that we might hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. God, we thank you after your word has been preached. We ask you to confirm it with signs. Follow when we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of Almighty God. My subject this morning on my assignment, spending time in his presence. <laughs> spending time in his presence. We get away from that. We get away from spending time in his presence. But it's the one thing that's needful. We don't spend enough time. In his presence. He never said that we didn't spend time in his presence, but we don't spend enough time. Because in his presence is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, that position of power, pleasures. 
Everything we need is in his presence. There ain't no new house in his presence. There ain't no money in his presence. Because, see, that kind of stuff brings you happiness. But he don't want us to have happiness. He wants to have that fruit. Joy. That joy is what he wants us to have. Old folks used to say, this joy, yeah, glory to God, that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. But when people take your stuff, your happiness goes. But when you're going through stuff and you got the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, then you can go through. People don't know how you're going through, but it's the joy of the Lord. Spending time in his presence what the Lord shared with me last week. He said, son, I want you to spend more time in my presence. It's for me, it's for you, the entire body of Christ. One size fit all. So in today's society, we're living in a, we're living in a time where things are moving all around. Everywhere you turn, something is happening. The way you turn, something is happening. CNN and, 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 and WTVD and WRAL and all of these networks overseas and, and different cities around. The stuff happening, but but those things that we we are we are looking at, they come to take your focus. Mm -hmm. Come to take your focus. Those things gonna happen. Stuff is gonna happen. Stuff gonna happen. But you need to stay focused. I want you really to take this personal today. Take it personal because the enemy is on assignment. All he wants is your soul. That's all he wants. He don't care nothing about what you got. He don't care about how fine you are. He don't care about, what, about your, your, your social status. He don't care about none of your, your Facebook status or how many followers you have. He don't care about none of that crazy stuff. He's after the souls of men. That's what he's after. And guess what he's doing? Playing for keeps. He's playing for keeps. The Bible said that hell is enlarging herself daily. Which means that more people are on their way to hell. Don't you be a part of the, of the statistics. Amen. People will even convince you now that you need to keep yourself busy in order to keep your focus. It's okay to be busy. But what are you busy doing? <laughs> oh, God. So, well, I don't, I don't think that there's anything wrong with keeping yourself busy, but I think the one thing we need to be careful of is what we're busy doing. What are you busy doing? Hmm. My God. So we waste a lot of time doing things that don't profit us anything. It's called time wasters. Mm -hmm. So we also make time to do all the things that we desire to do. But when it comes to the things of God, we always either don't have time or we find ourselves making excuses. I ain't going, I ain't going around the mountain to get to you this morning. I'm coming straight through. Amen. Amen. We, we need to stop all this sh sugarcoating. Telling folks what they want to hear. Amen. Amen. If folks are not right with God, just share it with them. We need to get ourselves together. Amen. Because if you don't, the blood will be on your hands. Mm -hmm. So, watch this now. I'm going to share this with you. Now. And we know this is us. We even get to the point. When we think we can fool God. What I mean is, when you really want something from God, you know how to make time then. God is tired of us treating him like a genie. Mm -hmm. We think we can just rub him the right way. And phew, up pop my miracle. Yeah. God in return, he grants us our wish because we treat him like a genie. And then after we get what we want, we go back to the old life we were living before we needed something from God. God is tired of it. 
God is tired of it. God wants quality time. Quality time. He don't, he don't, I ain't coming up here to say he, he don't want, he don't want what's left. He want what's right. No, he wants quality time. Quality time. We got to stop slipping the scripture in and then going about our whole day and think we've done something. And our spiritual man is starving. He's starving. Ain't nothing wrong with you having a regular conversation, but at some point, what's in you will come out of you. I ain't come to throw off on nobody. Sometimes the word throw off on me. Come on. So, time now for us to slow down. Take time out of our busy schedules. And give God some quality. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. Quality. Because see, the enemy, he's, he's, a, he's a sneaky joker. Mm-hmm. It's a sneaky joke. He see all the, you know, when it's, when it, the Bible says, uh, I think it's Ephesians 4, 27, you know, give no room to the enemy. We give room to the enemy when we don't do what we're supposed to do for us, you know, be full of the word. Put a crack in your arm. He gets right in. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't have no, we, but we never have no problem feeding the flesh. Never have no problem feeding the flesh. So, God is not looking for any fair weather Christians. As long as things are going good, you don't need God. And then all hell breaking loose, then you need it. Then you need it. I'm pulling on him. You don't even know your voice. I don't know why you ain't getting no response. Because you ain't talked with him a while. Give me Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. God is sick of us putting him at the bottom of the list. Get up and testify, thank God, you know, the head of my life. And you're just dragging God along. I know this is a heavy word this morning, but it's all good. Read the Bible. Tell them where you are. Matthew 6, 33. Mm-hmm. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things Shall be added unto you. He said, but seek ye first. The principle of first things. Seek God first. You got stuff going on. Seek God first. Go to your friends and your family. Seek first God. What God got to say about it. We expect the world's priorities to be out of order. but Because they don't have any instructions. But we have instructions. And our priorities are still out of order. We got the instruction book. We got the owner's manual. Yeah, got the owner's manual sitting right in before. You know, the sad thing about it is everything we buy with an instruction book, we never read the instructions. We just start using the product. You wonder why we don't, you wonder why, we wonder why the thing is not operating right because we have not yet read the instructions. Some of us sitting in here, we had a, we had a, 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 a instruction from God to read the Bible. In this ministry, we have been, we've been instructed to read from Genesis to Revelation. And some of us have quit. Some of us have quit. I ain't going to ask you to raise your hand. You know, you know who you are. Who should be reading the Bible from front to back? If you've been in the kingdom at least a year, you should be reading the Bible at least once. We want to tell somebody about the Bible and we don't know what's in the book. Amen. It's not your job to live it. It's your job to read it. And let him live it through you. And what you need, he'll bring it back when you need it. You wonder why we're stumbling trying to minister to somebody because we ain't got the word on the inside. Mary sat at his feet. I had you to underline something. Go back to Luke chapter 10. I had you to, I had you to underline something. I'm glad I told you to underline because the Holy Ghost showed this to me. He showed it to me. I hadn't seen this before, but I read When I saw it, I said, man. The Bible says that Martha received him into her house. So 
So she was saved. She, re she received Christ, but she was not committed. Her relationship won't right with it. That's why she thought it was okay to do all the other stuff. Whenever God show up, you sit down at his feet. Sit down in his presence. Spend time with him. Because you don't know when he might drop by again. Oh my God. Yeah. That thing, I, I had many times I've preached this past scripture. I had never seen that. The Holy Ghost said, look at that. Say, so what that Martha won't say? It wasn't that she hadn't received Christ. But every time you read about Martha, she's always doing the same thing. She's busy. Too busy for God. And some of us, let you finish the rest of it. So, instead of us seeking God first, we always lean toward our fleshly desires. Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 5, 25, there was a woman that had an issue of blood. Now, the Bible said that she heard that Jesus was passing by. Now, the Bible said that she had been to all the physicians. She had spent all her money and she still won't know better. So she leaned first to all of her fleshly desires. But when her money couldn't get her healing, she had to come back to her maker. We, a lot of us, we lean into all these fleshly desires. I have to understand, you're going to have to come back to your maker. In his presence is the fullness of joy. Everything we need is present. You, you notice how the enemy fights you when it's time to spend some time with him? You don't have no fighting all the time. When you get ready to go out and eat and all that stuff, they, people start pulling up the side of the road. Let them fight. They're going to eat. <laughs> But when you're trying to come to church, traffic jams. And just me, right? I, I was trying to get it this morning. I was trying to get it. I was I'm trying to get it. So the enemy will always, he'll always send distractions to keep you from spending time with God. Whenever it's time to do the things of God, watch. The devil start coming up with little things coming your way. Watch. And then we have like we we like we don't even realize it's the enemy. Ah, what's happening now? Can't you see the devil? Can't you see it? Or you need somebody to give you a prophetic word? Ah. So, mm -hmm. this what this watch this right here. When you get ready to pray, the phone rings. Mm hmm. Get ready to read the word. Company shows up. You see any jokers in you? They won't show up now. You get ready to fast, and your enemy invites you out to lunch. The enemy invites you out to lunch, and you go. Why? 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 Because we are still eating. From the tree of knowledge. Genesis 2 17. We're still eating from the tree of knowledge. Now, the tree of life is right in front of you. The word of God is the tree of life. That, that tree was there all the time. But the enemy never caused them to focus on the tree of life, just caused them to focus on the tree of knowledge, of good and evil. The enemy ain't going to never cause you to see nothing pertaining to God. Never. We, we holding hands with him, dancing with him, and he's going to lead you to hell. That's his demise. Yeah. So, watch the no. Hmm. Some of the things that come to, to take my time, cell phones, laptops, just getting on social media, and we get on Social media will stay hours. I never seen somebody. I never seen so many people driving around and they heads down, and they driving. I get beside people sometimes and speed up and slow down so I can try to get their attention, and they only look that way. 
And they started flying down the road. Everybody's busy. God's sending us a warning today. Spend our time more wisely. Spend more time in the presence of God than we do on Facebook. We pick our phones up first thing in the morning, but it's okay to do that as long as you're going to a scripture. You're not checking your social status and how many people are following you. Is that phone, has it become a stronghold? I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, you got to ask yourself that question. Can you really do without it? Can you really do without it? Oh, no, it's a part of my job, but can you really? Do without it because I found out that you don't realize that something is a problem until it's time to get rid of it. God's speaking to us this morning. I'm, I'm so grateful that he wished that no man would perish, but all men would come to repentance. I'm so glad about that. He loves us that much that he don't want us to go to hell. He don't want, now, it's not that, now, now, when you struggle, that's a good thing. That's just a good indication you ain't gave up. But then when we struggle, we complain. We go through, we complain. When are you ever going to be satisfied? When are you ever going to be satisfied? When are you going to grow up to a level that when you hear people around you talking stuff that you can shut your ears to it and smile at them and say, and you ain't hearing them? To grow up in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So, we shouldn't be like Martha, too busy. We should be like Mary, take time to hear the word. Matthew 4, man shall not live by bread alone. But every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. My spirit man lives by spiritual food. We don't fast to lose weight. We're going to die to lose weight. Amen. Some of us are so strong. Our flesh is stronger than our spirit. That's a dangerous place. It's a dangerous place. I want you to understand I'm preaching to me too, okay? Watch this. John, John 8. John, I'm sorry. John 12. 1 through 8. I want you to see something. I, I, we opened up with Luke 10 and 38 and talked about Martha. Talked about Mary. Am I correct? Read John 12, 1 through 8. We're doing good on time. Let's go. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany. Mm -hmm. For Lazarus, which was had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. Look, look at Martha. See what she Martha? She's still doing the same thing. So, so, so why is God keep showing us the same thing? Because he's trying to get our attention. Because this is an example that we shouldn't follow. Mm, okay, 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 okay. Watch now. So, Every time Jesus came to their house, their house, Martha was distracted with much serving. Every time. Focused on things that were important, but they were less important when it came to why Jesus came to the house. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. We got to get our mentality, got to be changed. Our mentality, the way we the way we think. Come on. And be not conformed to this world, mm -hmm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the only thing that's going to change my mentality is I got to stay exposed to the word of God. Children of Israel came out of Egypt physically. But mentally, their mentality never changed. They still thought about their past. You brought us out here to die. We were better in Egypt. But go back to the world. 
That's what you want to do. Go back to the world. God ain't going to stop you. God don't stop us from doing anything. We are free will agents. Jesus didn't have to go to the cross. He had, he, he, he had his own will. He said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. But he thought about it. He said, Lord, is there another way we can do this besides me going to the cross? But he got to a place that he didn't lose his focus and he remembered why he came to the earth. He remembered. He said, nevertheless, not my way. <laughs> All right. Mm. Don't keep entertaining your flesh. We shouldn't follow the pattern of the world, of the way of the world. Oh. They're not saved. They're on their way to hell. Why are we going to follow them? Going to wild parties. Going to clubs. Hanging out on street corners. Doing things in the world. Matthew 24. I don't know whether I'm going to go there or not. I don't know if I'm going to go there or not. I wrote it down. But, uh, Matthew 34, are you there? I'm in 24, are you there? Read verse 37 for me. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay. As the days of Noah were, so shall the days be when the Son of Man comes. Yes, come so in order for us to find out how the days of Noah were, we need to go back to Genesis chapter 6. Let's go there. You got, to, you got to go there. You can't just assume. Right? You know, we do a lot of assuming. That's why we're in the predicament we're in. I saw. Yeah. A lot of people that died and thought. Are you there? Genesis 6. And start at verse 1. And it came to pass. Uh -huh. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth. And daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Hold right now. Now, wickedness was on the earth. God was upset with man. He gave Noah a message, and mess the message that Noah preached, he preached it for 120 years. It's going to rain. And then he tells them to build a boat. Then they laughed at it. Now the scripture don't say they laughed at it, but you can imagine it. I, and, I, and, 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 and in my in my mind, I don't believe that Noah built that boat alone. I don't believe just him and his sons built that boat. I think some of the people in the world that was around them helped them build that boat, and he paid them. I believe that. I believe that. So now, as the days of Noah were. I saw something here that the Lord showed me. I hadn't seen it before either. Watch this. I'm, can I read it to you? Verse 4. No, hold on. Let, 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 me deal with, let me deal with verse number 3 first. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Now we'll take that. We'll use that verse today. Won't we? Somebody say error. Because his spirit dwells in us as believers. He don't take his spirit from us. He seals us with his spirit. So when people use that scripture, well, you know the, the Bible says, you know, his spirit ain't always lively man. He might not strive with you. I'll tell you one thing. If he don't strive with you when he cracked the sky, I know where you're going to strive at. L-A-K-E. So listen to this right here. Uh, and, uh, let me read the rest of it. For he, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be that's how long Noah preached. 120 years. Watch now, I'm going somewhere. Listen to this. So this is right here what the Lord showed me. And there were giants in the earth in those days. Here's what he showed me. And also, after that. After what? There were giants before the flood. And there were giants after the flood. I had never seen them before. What do you see about again? In numbers, over in Canaan land. So when you, so that's how you'll know once you get to your promised land, because you'll be seeing giants. 
And you're going to have to deal with them giants in the promised land. Where is the promised land at? I'm glad you asked. On the inside of you. Those giants in you, they must come out. You know what the giants are, lust and pride. You know what the giants are. If you go back and look at the Habazites, Jewish, those giants represent spirits in the land. We are the land. So there were giants. I couldn't, when I saw that thing, I said, dog, Lord. I said, hmm. He said, there were giants before and after. Spirits. My flesh. These sons of God, they were fallen angels. They had daughters. They married daughters and had children. And those children were Nephilims. They were giants. They were giants. Mm, Holy Ghost. And these same giants right here in Genesis chapter 6 are the same giants that are chained up right now in hell. Those are the giants. That, those are the angels, fallen angels that are chained in, in outer darkness right now. they chained up. Waiting for judgment. It's in the book of Peter. I'm going to let you find it. Well, see, we just read the book. We need to study the book. Uh, mm, going a while. Watch this now. So we should, we should be seeking the ways of God. Although some of us say that we know the right way, we don't follow it. Mm -hmm. It's time now for us in Christ change our whole mindset. Because the mind is the battlefield. It's the battlefield. The, 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 the biggest battlefield or the biggest fight you got is between your ears. Because everything the enemy sins, he always sins to the mind. I can't even share with somebody this morning that faith and fear come the same way. They do. Both of them come by what you hear. If you hear somebody going to get you, Fear set in. It does. Because you know it's fear of the unknown. You don't know what a joker might do to you. People are they crazy. But the enemy, I mean the enemy can use anybody. Even us. Even you. Even me. He can use any of us. We are worse enemy. You do know that, don't you? Every battle that we're fighting is not the devil. Some, some of the battles we're fighting are, are, are our own nature. One of those giants that need to come out of me. David needs to slew his giant. You need to slew your giant. You, David. You said you got the five smooth stones, which is the five fold. <laughs> slew your giant. The stone is the word. Good God Almighty. Huh? When you gonna throw a stone at the giant? Yeah, when you gonna throw a stone, don't try to preach it, something. I know you can take some notes on it. Don't take it to New York. <laughs> when you going to slow the giant that's tormenting you? That giant said, send me a man. Good God Almighty, send me a man. Yeah. And then the Holy Ghost in David says, is there not a cause? He said, what should a man get for slowing this giant? Guess what you get for slewing your giant? Nothing. It's only your reasonable service. <laughs> it is only your reasonable service. It's a part of your deliverance. Come on, talk to me. Don't get nothing for slewing your own giants. Yeah. God, look, God, he, he rewards us for helping somebody else. David Glory to God. David got a reward because he helped his own brothers. Huh. I know your problem bigger than you are. And you got a big problem on the inside, boy. And I, I, I look, just gonna look at you. I don't mean I'm talking to you now, but now. You understand what I'm saying, though? Man, we, we, need to be, we need to be delivered. And spending time with God brings forth deliverance. It does. Man, let me tell you something. When you fall in love with that word and you really start getting that word in you, a lot of stuff, people call you like, yeah, okay, uh, let me call you back. It might be two, two or three days before you call them back. Because 
that, that foolish lady, that, that foolish lady they're talking about, it don't even pertain to you. It'll be to set them to waste your time. And we can't deserve that. Everybody come your way ain't for you to entertain. We think we so important. Everybody calling on you. After a while, you ain't gonna have nothing in you. Because so they'll empty you out. You know what you know, once people see your anointing, they'll use you up until your anointing is dwindled. And then once you can't, ooh, glory. And once you can't produce the oil that they need, they'll find somebody else. That's the way people are. That's their nature. So you mean you can't help me? Well, I'll get with you later then. That's why you see all these conferences and all this stuff going on everywhere. Everybody is desperate. But you know the thing? You know, you know what the thing is about it? Our solution is in his presence. And we run into all these places. All you got to do is get on your face before God. And you'll get more in his presence. Come when you go to this conference, you got to do a registration fee. You got to do an offering. You got to smile when you don't want to. You got to talk to people you don't want to talk to. But if you just get into his presence, help somebody, boy. God Almighty. I'm in love. I'm in love with this word, man. I'm in love with this. I don't care how many engagements that I get. I'm not trying to compete with nobody. Hey, Amen. I'm not trying to do that. So many preachers. How many you got over there, dog? I say, ain't none of mine. That's all, that's all they worry about. How big your church and all that. Yeah, really? What is all that about? How many members you done stole with somebody? Yeah, some, some of them are just hirelings. Quiet now, boy. All right, so. Mm-hmm. Watch this here. So. We often, no, 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 excuse me. Change just doesn't happen. We must be the initiators. We must take the first step. It ain't no scripture in the Bible that said if you take one step, God gonna take two. That's foolish. He took one step to Calvary. If you don't receive that, He get nothing else. He ain't. See, I, I don't know. I don't know what the church as a whole. I don't know what we're waiting on God to do next, but He ain't gonna do nothing next. It ain't no next. Guess what's gonna happen next? Rapture. While you looking around, he ain't got ready. LB left behind. Okay. You better, look, you better get it now while it's flowing. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's a, to everything, there's a time and a season. You better get you better get the water while it's flowing. You better get that word in you while you got it in your house. I keep telling you, these Bibles are going to be taken. You got no word in you. Don't come time to pull my word out of me. I'm going to need my little oil. Keep my little light burning. Amen. And the one thing we shouldn't, as people of God, we shouldn't be around here stacking food up because we're scared. Hello, we got people on TV selling food packets. <laughs> Better get ready. David said, I was young. Good God Almighty. And now I'm old. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his seed begging for it. We ain't got no better begging. Any beggars in our? Just saying, um, all right. Lay you at the gate. All right. <laughs> so making an inward change will show outwardly at some point. Now we often talk about change, but we very seldom do. There's some things we can change. Change how you think. That's the biggest thing that, that, that's our, one of our biggest problems. We can't think different. Some of the stuff our parents taught us, some traditions stuff, we can't shake them up. Stop cutting the ham off. <laughs> that tradition, man. Some tradition is good. I've never said, but some of that stuff. Hey, there's some of the remedies that mom and them had drinking kerosene all day. It'll kill you now. Amen. Go to the doctor. They, 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 they didn't want to go to the doctor. Man, what? They were doing all kinds of stuff. They didn't y'all know that. 
wrapping the rabbit's feet up, wrapping yeah. around your head when you had a cold and all that crazy stuff. Yeah. Come on, y'all know. Let's go see Grandma. You know Grandma was a root worker? Yeah. <laughs> Some of that stuff was demonic they were doing, but it worked. We got to denounce that stuff and don't go back to it. You familiar, demon? We ain't talking about you, Grandma. We're talking about the spirit that you, you know. There's a lot of stuff, man. The ignorance. That's where the enemy is going. That word ignorance, not knowing, is what's going to get a lot of people in the body of Christ. What we don't know. My people, those L 6 my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But we don't know. If you don't know something and somebody know it, go sit at their feet and let them help you. Drop the pride. See, a lot of people, they don't want young people helping because they don't think they know much. Some older pastors, I can help. I can help a lot of older pastors, I'm telling you. Because some of that stuff they got, you know, that's some of that stuff they preaching and teaching. They got from their other bishops and that stuff was wrong. I don't care if you don't like it social media. I don't care. Right is right. Yeah. Because some of that stuff that they, they taught us, you can't even find it in the scripture. And that stuff ain't going to take you no further than where, 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 where they went. That's it. I'm, I'm just being so honest. I tried to hook up with an organization called the Shepherd's Table. And there were older pastors there. And my thing was, but hooking up with them was so they could help me. Man, I got in, I got in that thing and I was like, they don't know nothing. I said to myself now, you know. <laughs> but they don't know nothing. I was thinking Paul Timothy. I was Paul and they was Timothy. I said, so, so anyway, uh, here's the thing, because the Holy Ghost showed me this. There is no age in the anointing. When God anoints a young man, it ain't got to do with his age. That's why a lot of that's why Paul told Timothy, now look, now you're gonna have to go through this and, and they're gonna be acting this way and, and all this stuff you have to put up with, but just know that God called you. Amen. I heard one woman that wanted me to, I don't want to hear what you got to say because because you know you ain't been in this long. I said, honey, let me tell you something. If I tell you what you should do with that dick you got in your church, I know what you should do with it. Right? First of all, you need to sit down. First of all, you need to sit down. Somebody need to teach you. Amen. But see, the thing about it, God will always have you walk in a, 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 a position before you get there. Hello. I went to churches and people talking about, you trying to take my church. Amen. I, mean, you did, I don't know why you're intimidated by me. You told me the Lord said, I know the Lord sent you here. But then when you let me up to teach, now now you trying to take over. Why? Why, why, why do you feel that way? Because I'm from my, look, I'm from a different fold. Give me, give me, give me John 16, verse 10. No, 10 and 16. Matthew, no, did I say John? Yeah, John 10, 16. Give me, give me John 10, 16. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Ooh. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So I'm from another fold. It don't mean I ain't in the fold. I'm just from another fold. Don't tell me that your denomination is the only one right. He said, I got another sheep of another fold. I'm going to one day bring them all together. I, I told one guy one day we were doing outreach. I told him, he said, oh, man, that stuff ain't right now. this I got a track to say, suppose what I'm telling you is true. <laughs> suppose what I'm telling you is true. You'll see a lot of times people just don't want to listen. I don't want to listen either. Some of you hand me tracks. I said, man, I didn't want this stuff. Put it in, the, put it in my pocket, throw it in the trash can. Then the Lord spoke to me one day and said, you remember when you used to come down there? And an old guy used to give you tracks and you throw them away. He said, I want you to try here doing the same thing. <laughs> and then guess what? People were doing the same thing I did when I was getting tracks. I didn't know they don't. They, they look, he, I said, "Well, God, they don't." I felt like I felt like you know, he told Samuel, "Well, they don't reject." He said, "No, they ain't rejecting you. They rejecting me." And then I'm gonna bring the same day back to them. I'm gonna play it on the big screen. I didn't have a chance to know God. You remember that little short guy that was down there in front of the courthouse and you? 
<laughs> All that trash, I can do it on the ground. God was trying to get your attention that day. It's just the little things in God that we miss. Little things. We look for the big stuff. God opened the heavens if he knew you run. When the people look, when he when the people got to the, the, the mountain, the bottom of Mount Sinai, and told him, said, Look, I want the people to sanctify themselves tomorrow. I'm coming down. The Bible said that lightning thunder sound. That was his voice. And they ran in here. You don't want to hear God speak audible. He'll split your head open. Your flesh couldn't take it. You must stand and say, What's wrong with you? I heard it. <laughs> Listen to this. Ooh, glory. So, it's time to get it's time to set order in our life. A lot of the things we do in life have nothing to do with God. Mm -hmm. They are good ideas, but they are not God ideas. Yeah, they sound good, but have nothing to do with the kingdom. Rainbow teas, I'm going to say it. Rainbow teas, fill the pew services, uh, sew your shoe size, all that stuff is foolishness. Yeah, all these come. I heard I've seen a conference. I better not say that. The Holy Ghost didn't tell me. See, now, if God tells you to say something, he'll defend you. But if you say it, you open pray. But it's a lot of stuff we see now. Amen. Because God had to do it. sounds so good. But God will never use the things of the world to promote his kingdom. He don't do that. He said in, in, in Leviticus 16, put a difference between, between holy and unholy. I know the devil ain't liking this boy. A lot of people probably won't come this way and need to. It's not this. So, Martha, <laughs> she was making sure that the disciples in Jesus ate. That was a good thing. But it wasn't a God thing. It wasn't a God thing. It was not a God thing. Every time he came by, she wanted to serve him. God rebuked I mean, Jesus rebuked her. Martha, Martha, please. She probably said, please sit down, Martha. But he was like, please sit down. You are distracting me. God bringing a word to the house and you were, you're ready to, to fix food. He's trying to give you some bread. <laughs> he is the bread. Come on. Uh, give, me, give me 2 Timothy 2.4. I'm coming in. This is my last point. I'm doing good this morning. Doing good. I hope I'm helping us. We need to spend more time in his presence. We do. Yeah. And we'll talk less. Let me share something with you while you're getting there. Second Timothy 2 4. You hold on a minute. The prophets of old, they were called seers. They would not come out of the chambers unless God had something to say. Now everybody prophets. Everybody got something to say. Watch this up in the Bible. I think it's first seven chapter three. The Bible said that the word of the Lord was it was precious or rare in those days. Now God won't share his word with a lot of people. God is not speaking to all these people that say God is speaking to them. If God is speaking to you, why is your order out of order? If your order ain't matching up with the word, it's out of order. I went there last Sunday and the Holy Ghost told me to, but uh, he just told me to say the order. Come on, man, it's an order. It's God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of man of the church. And then man is the head of woman. Can't change that order. If you change it, it's perverted. It's perverted if you change it. It is perverted if you change it. Read the Bible, man. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Our ultimate goal should be to advance the kingdom of God. That's why he sent us to this earth. For nothing more. He didn't send you here to be a millionaire. He didn't send you to be here to have a full quibble of children. Everywhere and all of them got different mamas. He didn't do that. He didn't say you didn't sow no oats. 
Amen. He didn't see you do that. God is a God of order. Oh, that's a whole lot I want to say, but my flesh is crumbling. <laughs> Your flesh ever rumble when somebody arguing with you? Calm him down. That's all you got to do. Calm him down. So God has called us out of darkness to carry the gospel to a dying world. That's why we're here. We ain't here to look good. We ain't here to look. When God said, give me some praise, he don't mean. In, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he said, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, as you present your body a living sacrifice. You know what a living sacrifice really is. It's a person, it's a sacrifice that's set on fire and is not consumed. They're on fire for God. Their focus is nothing but the kingdom of God. They're, look, they are seeking first. Matthew 6, 7, they are seeking first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. All the stuff they need, God adds to them. God causes people to give into their bosom because their focus is right. They're hearing God. Hearing God. Some of us ain't hearing God. We think we're hearing God. Some of us hearing us. Mm, we talk about them psychics, and you know, people right around you can be psychics. If they're telling you stuff that God ain't saying and you believe in it. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't ready for me. People may criticize you for being a Mary, but in the end, it'll be well worth it. I got a new name. The name ain't gay either. Call me Mary. I'm sitting at his feet. Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you, man, it's a lot of stuff, man. I, I, oh, God. I, you know, it frustrates me to see some of that. And, and, and I, I'm, maybe I need to limit Facebook. Maybe I need to get off Facebook. I ain't going to deactivate my page. Because I'm going to need it to, re to, to record and get this word. I'm just trying to get the word out to a dying world. Because there's a lot of churches that are not teaching and preaching the truth. Ain't no such thing as the gospel of prosperity. That's another gospel. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 and 9 said that Paul said if me an angel or any other body. It's a bad word. Come preaching any other gospel. Let him be accursed. And some of this stuff, people, you got to sow into this ministry. You got to get this. If your word, if the message you got is going to change my life, why well, I got to pay you for it? You ought to be giving it out free. He said, God about it. He said, let them come about price. We should let them come to God free. He did not know the scripture said now, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. So if you're that powerful, why well, you ain't giving your CDs out free, your DVDs? That's why, why, why at the end of your 30 minutes, you got to look. When you're on TV for 30 minutes, you got 20 minutes, a 20-minute window to preach. That last 10 minutes, don't get up the end and beg. Beg, they beg in that last 10 minutes. You check it out, every program. Yeah, they beg. So we'll see. I ain't never done this before. But God told me, God just changed his mind. We don't normally do this, but I mean, look, the thing about it, you ain't got to be on TV if it's costing you a million dollars a year. It's enough people on, it's enough people on the on TV spreading the gospel. You can go stand on the street corner, it won't cost you a dime. Y'all don't know about that. God told us to do this. If it's God's will, it's his will. It's God's good if it's if it's his will. If he told you to do it with provision, with vision come provision. God told me to do this. Well, wait on it. If you ain't got the money yet, it ain't time to do it. Robbing Peter to pay Paul. You want to pay Paul back out the wall? I mean, pay Peter back out the wall. Yeah. I've seen some of the man, we're some of the begging this people. Ain't some of the begging this people in church. Go ahead and do offering time and stuff, man. They want you to give your whole meal for it. Man, I, 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 I can't do it. If you need a Rolls Royce, you pay for it. I ain't helping. 
So we must understand that we are soldiers in God's army now. We don't want to belong to ourselves. First Corinthians 6.20 where well, you are bought with a price. We are purchased by the blood of Jesus. God wants us now to stand tall, dress right, dress because we will be uh, soon we'll be standing in ranks inspection, standing before the king. What will they tell you? Well, good, thy good and faithful servant of depart from me, I never knew. He ain't gonna tell you both. Either somebody look at somebody and say either or. <laughs> Ooh, you you and the thing about it, you have control over that. We are God's special forces. Ninety nine and a half ain't gonna do. Ah, oh, God. Huh. God. Now the thing about it, God want our best. He gave His best. John 3, 16. Yeah. God so loved the world, he gave himself for a dying world. He didn't have to do it. He was a man that knew no sin, but became sin for us. So we didn't have to die and go to hell. And some of us still turn our rump up to God. We are. That's when you get what you want, then nobody don't see you for six months. Uh, man, I had, I had jumped, let me tell you something that they really, I'm going to use that word, P word, pee me off. You get it. And somebody called me and said, well, you know, one of your members is sick. I ain't sitting there talking six months. They ain't my member. <laughs> for real. What have you been for six months? I'm like, they ain't need. You're right, they're going to need to find another church. What they need? Is that wrong? This is one of the ones that are tell them. You need to call them. Watch me. Is that ugly? What would you do? No, what would Jesus do? I don't know what he would do. But I know what I'd do. Not call. Come on, man. I'm just, cause my thing is, my, 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 spiritual, my spiritual dad taught me some things about dealing with members. He taught me some things how to deal. I said, man, I said, at what point is a person no longer affiliated with you? He said, when you don't see him for about two months. Then people get upset when you call and check on, hey, what you want? Mm-hmm. We'll come over here and tighten you up. You keep talking like that. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 six months I ain't seen you, but now all of a sudden I'm going to come. Not me. I'm not leaving the 99 to go chase the one. And I'm going to let you do that. What if you what if you go chase the one and you let you lose the 99 and you still don't get the one? You paying all the bills in the building by yourself. The building back and it's long, you be preaching the carpet and chairs. Say amen. And don't say nothing. Okay, I'm closing. I'll watch this. So he gave his life for us on the old rugged cross. The only thing he's asking us to return is to serve him wholeheartedly. To serve him. Not to, he showed you how to do it in spirit and in truth. We ain't got the business saying everything we feel. We say everything we feel. We live our feelings. At what point are you going to hold your peace and let the Lord fight for you? You said the battle ain't yours. This battle ain't mine. Well, who got it then? If it's yours, then you got the hush. I mean, if it's the Lord. Yeah. You just go forward. I know you got some stuff behind you following you. I know you got difficulty in front of you. I know you got mountains on this side and valleys on that side. You can't do nothing but go straight forward. Yeah. Sometimes you got to just walk. Just keep walking. The Bible said when they walk toward the Jordan, when they feet hit the water and departed, it's pretty split. It's split. What you saying? Just keep walking forward. Everything that try to stop you, it'll get out your way. You got to stop looking at what you see. The things you see are temporal. God trying to get you to walk into the eternal things. He told, He showed you some stuff, but you ain't gonna get that walking in your flesh. I don't see it, and you won't talk me like that. You ain't gonna say that. This is this, this is a faith walk. The just shall live by what they believe. Faith. Faith ain't what you see. It's what you believe. Am I right? 
You didn't think you were going to be where you said that this morning, but you know, that's faith. Truth of the matter is, we should have been in hell somewhere. I know I should have been. Yeah. Some of us don't experience death. We don't saw death. And God pulls us out. Close your eyes. God said, not time yet. He brought you back. Everybody ain't going to have the same test, but I want to die and come back. I don't. Because you might die and not come back. We, we, we say some crazy stuff. Yeah, some of us don't say Some of us think it. I wish I had a powerful testimony where I could get up and everybody pat me on the back. You mean, I, told, I told one joker, this is how, this is how, this is how I, I told him, I said, look, you ain't got to add nothing to your testimony. You ain't got to add nothing. You don't get, God ain't going to anoint you no more. You got to know, I'm going to go out there and do this, and he's going to anoint me even more. That's a man. Okay. Y'all keep living. Y'all hear people talk crazy like this. So God was looking for sharp soldiers. Starch uniform. Dress right there. Look at it. Spit shine boots. Soldiers of integrity. Somebody with moral standards. In place on Sundays. Accountable to leadership. See, when you start looking at your pastor, is, is, if you stop looking at him as a man, it's quiet in there, Yeah. Stop looking at him as a man. No, he's a spokesman for God. He, not her. He. Oh, there we go again. He, not her. He. Spokesman. Spokesman. A man that speaks. Yeah, you go to, you go to your job. And you treat your boss better than you treat your pastor. You on time, don't want to be there, but on time. You don't never, uh, you don't never before your ship up. <laughs> and you go around and say, oh, excuse me, boss, uh, I got some stuff going on. And I'll be leaving it. Sometimes the pastor don't know where some of y'all are. He don't, he don't, he don't. Y'all know I'm, I'm, I'm joking, but I'm serious. Okay? Amen? Give me Hebrews 13, 17, so they don't think I'm trying to be controlling. Before you read that, it's time for us to reconstruct some of the things in our life. We've got to reconstruct. That means some stuff got to be torn down before God can redo it. Give me uh, give me that scripture I just asked for. 13, Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. That's safe. Look, that's sacred and secular. That's natural and in the in the body of Christ. Obey them that have the rule over you, for they do what? And submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. I ain't lying for you. God said, you seen such and such? No, God I ain't seen them go ahead on and send the flame. But no, on a serious tip, you got to give an account for your soul, you're leaving. People say, well, I ain't got to be a part of no church. According to the Bible, we, we need to be a part of a fold. Don't want to be no bastard just running around, no rebel. Want to be connected to somebody. You're in a, you're in a normal, you're in a natural family. You can look at a lot of the natural stuff and, and see spiritual stuff, but we, we don't want to see it. If we don't want to see it. God called me to be in charge. Well, you always follow before you leave, and if you don't follow well, you'll never leave well. Amen. You never will. I waited on my time to come. It came. Some stuff showed up that I didn't sow, and I went to the Lord about it. I said, Lord, I didn't sow this. Where this coming from? It was the enemy. And the Bible said when they slept, they sold good seeds, but when they slept, the enemy came and sold some tears. So you got to follow well before you leave well. Learn how stuff go before you try to jump out there. That water deep. That water deep now. And if you go, you get out there before God call you. He ain't gonna hold you up. Yeah, he ain't gonna promise you, he ain't gonna do it. You people, people jump out there and start churches and stuff, God ain't told them to do it. If God had told me to do none of this, I wouldn't have done it. God, be my witness. I didn't want to do it. I said, God, I'm not moving until you confirm this thing. I'm not doing it. 
Now, I won't be there. I ain't being rebellious. I want to be sure. But I won't spend all my money on everything. Hello. But you know, if you start on your own, you end it on your own. Yeah. But see, the thing about it, when you do it the way God says, God will start sending you people. They ain't got to be rich, but they'll sow into, they'll sow into the vision. Amen. So we got to spend, spend time with God. Let God speak to you. He'll talk to you and tell you some things that you need to know. He'll give you revelation. I'm telling you, he'll give you revelation that'll blow your mind. He said some stuff sometimes. I said, man, ain't no way in the world I could have thought of that. Amen. All right, I'm, 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 I'm finished. I'm waiting my closing place here. We got, to, we got to do a little more praying and fasting now. Amen. Why did you spend the time with him? That's a part of it. Crucifying that flesh. The only thing that crucifies that old man of that flesh is fasting. You can't do it on your own. Amen. You got to starve that rascal to death. You do. Amen. You can't feed him every time he's hungry. I'm hungry. You stick something in your mouth. Stop that joke. No, you ain't getting nothing today. I'll tell you, now, that's a hard statement to make. If you tell God you're going to fast four hours, good God of my, that is rough. I'm talking about absolute fast. I'm talking about nothing. You know, just a little water that four hours. You watch how my stuff come against you. I'm talking about stuff. Watch. I'm telling you, watch how that flesh start cutting up. It's like that's the longest four hours of your life. Then you talking about eight hours? Or you talking about three days? Somebody told me, so, you know, you need to fast before you do your initial sermon. God ain't told me to fast before I do my I'm going to eat. But that was the flesh talking. No, we need to, that's, that's, that's part of consecrating. Consecrating yourself. Getting ready. So you'll hear God, not you. And stop trying to impress folks. We got enough impersonators. And copycats in the body of Christ. Let's be original. Do what God tell you to do. And don't do try to do it. Nothing else besides that. That's it. Just stay in your little lot. Just a small little area. Your little spirit. Stay right in your little spirit right there. That little, that little bit you give is going to help the body of Christ. And then humble yourself. Humble yourself. Take humility. Take the lower seat. You go to them big places, be low key. You ain't got to go in there with no, with no big tag on. Apostle, you walking like that. How you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> everybody know who you are. Really? Come on. If you're anointed up here, you can sit way in the back of the stadium and they'll see. It. And lo, behold, the Lamb of God's Son. Yeah, I mean, everybody want to be recognized. It's all about him, not us. Get to that place where it's all about him and all the other stuff that don't even matter in your life. Amen. I don't know, look, I, I don't know how long I'm going to pastor. I'm not going to pastor all of my life. I'm going to pastor as long as God tells me. My time going to come to a close. But I want to do what he called me to do while it's my time. You understand what I'm saying? Because at some point, you got to pass the baton and then go on to the greater work. God will never call you to less. He always call you to greater. Amen. But you got to lay foundation. Now, there might be some stuff that's finished in this vision that I might not even see. I'm a forerunner. I know that. No, I ain't John the Baptist. I'm William McNeil. Well, look at John. No, William. Amen. <laughs> so, well, we, 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 we'll trip people. You hear me? We got all the cliches. Yeah. You know, we know how to praise God. We know how to act in service. But the thing about it, some of us are in bondage. And we need to be uh, delivered. And we're scared to come before the people of God. We, we don't like people to see us naked. It's okay to be naked. I'd rather be naked now and get what I need in God than to stay bound and fake it. We got, yeah, we got no, we got no fakers. Yeah, we got no faith. All these, uh, all these fake anointings that people got yeah, on them. That's right. Ain't no problem. No. I was supposed, hey, like I was supposed to pray for your husband this morning. 
The Lord showed me him this morning. I don't even know his name. What's his name? I need to pray for Ernest. I need to lay my hands on Ernest. I don't know. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm the one that came to me. I don't yeah. know. I need to lay my hands on Ernest. The Lord showed me Ernest this morning. Amen. Yeah. Let me get to Ernest. But yeah, uh, just do what God called you to do. Stop trying to make your name great. Let his name be in life. Because you know the thing about it, when Jesus done certain things, he said, he said, tell no man. Tell no man. If somebody's leg was to grow out in, in, in this building right here, they have a short leg. Then they grew out, and somebody saw it on Facebook. This place would fill up because people are not focusing. That's not a good thing because you see a miracle happen, you fly over there. But it's because the body of Christ focuses off. Yes, it might not even be something they're gonna do. The Bible said the Antichrist is gonna do lying signs and wonders. Gonna draw many to himself. Jesus told him, said they're gonna say Jesus over there. He said, Don't believe it. Look, man, we, 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 we're running. But we're not hearing the voice of God. Not hearing the voice of God. Prophets come into town, we go fly over where they are. They're telling you anything and you believe it. Ain't none of that stuff coming to pass. Stand still, the Lord says, and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still. Now we're moving too much. Now we're moving too much. God can't speak to us. If he did, we wouldn't hear Because we're not focused. Gotta be focused. Spending time in his presence. Come on, clap your hands.